Building a following is hard. In this age of the internet, if you find yourself in the position of wanting to make a living doing something you love, it's really not that hard at all. A little hard work, consistency in a few years, and soon you can have your dream job. In theory. While in reality, you are just one of a sea of millions with that exact same mindset. And as you post whatever creative thing it is that you love, while in the moment, thinking that this would be the one that boosts you into popularity, this would be the one that starts your career, this would be the one that people actually see. More often than not, you get the same 3 or 4 likes and your hours of work are quickly forgotten. It's frustrating and you see so many people getting recognized and you wonder, what's wrong with me? Am I not good enough? Why am I even doing this when it's clear that no one really cares? It's that bit of entitlement that we all feel, and it's not a bad thing that you feel it. We all want to find success in the place our passion lies. This was the mindset I was in at the beginning of last year. I felt like anything I was doing wasn't really going anywhere. Not my art, not my YouTube channel, or anything really. I started to lose the passion I once had for creating, and it was also around that time that I read Bakuman for the first time. Bakuman is a series about a boy named Moritaka Mashiro, who feels perfectly fine accepting mediocrity in life. He'll get alright grades, go to an alright college, and work an alright salaryman job. He has no dreams of the spectacular, perfectly content to spend the time hanging with friends and playing video games. That is, until he meets Akito Takagi, one of the smartest kids in his school. Akito finds out who Mashiro has a crush on, and rather than out him, he offers him a proposition, make manga with him. Akito as the writer, and Mashiro as the artist. Brushing this aside at first, Mashiro turns him down, though he actually seems pretty knowledgeable about the manga world. It turns out that his uncle was actually a manga artist himself, or at least as he put it, a gambler. Mashiro once had dreams of becoming a manga artist, and he looked up to his uncle like no other. But his uncle struggled with his popularity, only really having one hit, and eventually, it seemed like he worked himself to death, just trying to make it in an industry that seemed done with him. That is why Mashiro quit. He's seen what dreams can do to a person. He knows how hard it is to make a living doing something you love. And he knows how easy it is just not to try. But Akito isn't done with him. He drags him to the house of a girl he has a crush on and tells him that him and Mashiro are going to become a manga artist. And she's ecstatic. She also has a dream of becoming a voice actor. Mashiro gets pulled into the excitement and exclaims that he will make a manga so popular it'll get an anime. And once it does, she will voice the heroine and they will get married. And to his shock, she agrees. They decide that they won't see each other until the dream comes true. And Mashiro and Akito head forward with the dream of becoming the best manga duo in all of Shonen Jump. From the moment I picked up the series, I couldn't put it down. As much as I champion animation, manga and comics might be my favorite form of media. I've read at least 10 chapters of manga a day, every day, for I don't know how long. There's just something special about it. It's a form of media that can be done by one person in a relatively short amount of time. And regardless of the quality of the art, if a story's good, it can be enough to pull someone in. So finding an entire series about making manga was an eye-opening experience for me. I've already read through Bakuman twice, and I'm already on my third read-through. And I've never gone back to a series so quick. I've never had a piece of media vent my frustrations for me like this. The characters in the book feel so real and so relatable, so tangible, that when I read a chapter, I get completely immersed. And a lot of that has to do with how the story progresses. With a story like this, you would think that the main characters would be some crazy talented artist with the ability to create hit after hit effortlessly. But in actuality, they don't have their first modest success for a long time. And even after they do, that success is finished with pretty quickly. And the next thing they manage to put out can be considered a mediocre series at best, almost regressing from where they were at first. There is a lot of failure in this story, and it's so important that that's the case. The world of manga is a cutthroat industry, insane work hours for not so extravagant pay, the constant threat of cancellation looming over you, 
and the crushing the man to stay popular, even if it kills you. It's not a job you take unless you really love what you do. And this series goes to great length to show that. And it's actually done by the same duo that created Death Note, a mega successful series, and this has elements of their journey to the creation of it. This series does a great job showing the experiences of so many different types of artists. From newcomers to veterans, cult hits to mainstream success, Bakuman shines a light on every step of the ladder of success. There's an artist that's been in the industry for over a decade, but can only find success as a assistant. There's one who just started his journey as a mangaka, but already has big dreams of changing Jump at its core. And there's even one who seems like the next great leader of manga. And that person is Eiji Nizuma. Eiji Nizuma is a prodigy. There's no other way of putting it. He effortlessly creates hit manga, finishes pages one after the other, showing no signs of stopping and eventually becomes one of the most popular manga artists that Jump has ever seen. Brilliant, eccentric, and downright confusing at times, Eiji Nizuma is the tour de force that becomes a rival to Mashiro and Akita. He's also the most supportive, insightful, and downright pleasant characters in the series. Not a shred of insensitivity or pride outside of wanting to be his best comes off of this character. He draws manga because he feels like he has to. He loves it so much it's like breathing to him. He's one of the best written artist characters I've ever had the pleasure of experiencing. And he's not even my favorite character. On the opposite spectrum, you have Hiramaru. A man who draws because he wanted an easy job, only finding out later how much work it is drawing manga for a living. Every artist has seen a person say they want to draw because it's so easy. The kind of idiots that think art should be free because the artist has fun drawing. You know, the worst kind of people. Hiramaru starts off as that kind of person, but here's the thing. He's actually a genius when it comes to making manga, and he hates it. He wants to go back to his office job, but his livelihood has become so entangled with his manga that it's almost impossible. I love Hiramaru. He is the best character in the series. Every creative person has been him at some point. People don't realize that art is really fun, but it's also really, really hard. Like, mind-breakingly hard. And sometimes we want to quit, but we don't because it fulfills us in some way. Hiramaru learns to enjoy his life with manga, and it brings him friends, success, and even love. He complains every step of the way, but at the end he's happy for his life. And the amount of respect he has for mangaka that actually do this for a living and enjoy it is bigger than any other character of the series. But not every character in this series has an happy ending, as not every person that wants to do art for a living actually makes it that far. We have Nakai, an eternal assistant that tries desperately to break into the manga industry, watching his younger peers find success where he could never. And after years and years of trying, he finally manages to get a series with the help of another young manga artist. He draws in the freezing cold, desperate to prove himself to her, and the manga industry. But his success is short-lived, and their series is cancelled. And when he confesses his love for his partner, she turns him down. He sadly gets the work assisting on another series, but when his partner comes back to him for help, he lets his loneliness and arrogance get the best of him, and tells her he'll help if she dates him. And disgusted, she slaps him. Throughout the series, things never really get better for Nakai. And while his character degrades more and more as the series goes on, it's true that situations like this happen. You can try really hard, but success isn't owed, and people often do things for the wrong reasons. And Nakai isn't the only example of failure in Bakuman. We have characters that age out of the industry, becoming too old to work. People that become outdated when it turns out that someone can do the same thing they can do, but better. And in the case of Mashiro's uncle, a person that works themselves to literal death, struggling valiantly to keep up with the industry he loves. And while the main characters ultimately succeed in the end, it is not without their fair share of failure. And that's what I really wanted to talk about. 
If you do anything creative, if you draw, sing, sculpt, cook, anything, and you want to do that for a living, and you feel like the road you have to walk is too long, please keep walking it. I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to quit and get a normal job. How many times I've thought my art wasn't good enough. I've worked literal days on art just to maybe get one person to like it. But you can't think that way. It's nice to have an audience and to be recognized, but you have to do what you love for more than that. Make a story because you want it to exist. Sing a song because you have music in your heart. Create something simply for the satisfaction of doing it. It's great to be able to do something you love for a living, but the simple fact is not everyone can do it. And that's okay. People have circumstances that stop them. Money, mental illness, many other things stop people doing from what they love. And for all the people that suffer from those things and still manage to create, you guys are the most amazing. If you love to create and you only manage to do one thing a week, a month, or even a year, I want you to realize that you are amazing and what you do is valid. I want people to realize that they're more than the numbers they produce, more than just another artist to be compared to. We all have our voice and we all have something to say. After I read Bakuman, I started from scratch. I restarted my comic. I started posting on YouTube again, and I've been putting my all into it. I'm not at the point where I can do it for a living yet, but there is no way I'm settling without trying my best. I've made so many friends doing what I do, through my art, through YouTube, and I wouldn't trade my experiences for anything. And if you feel bad that your art isn't performing as well as you hoped, Keep doing it. No matter how small your audience, no matter how long it takes you to put out something, unless someone is paying you, you don't owe them anything. It took me a while to realize this, but I hope that my words have reached you. And if you are a creative, I hope that you will keep creating. Because your art is valid. Your struggles are worth something. And there is joy in creativity. Whew, finally finished another video. Man, this is probably my longest one yet. But I hope you watched it and hope you liked it. And I hope it touched you in a way. I actually managed to get our video out and it didn't take a month. Go me? Anyway, thank you for watching. I want to give a really big thank you to like all the friends I've made on YouTube. Like the the entire like black cartoon community and especially man of a thousand thoughts for taking me in like if if he hadn't introduced me to all these youtubers i wouldn't know any of them and they're they're really good friends and i really enjoy talking with them and sharing ideas youtube's never been this fun before so i can't wait to see what the future holds in store if you like this video you know like subscribe or whatever you know just just have a good new year because i think i will be see you later